they call me the one, the one and only. I make sure your girl is never lonely. Mr. What's up? This is your boy, Jodeci Dion, and I'm bringing you NFL regular season 2010, week two, the sport of Kings. What did we learn after week one in the NFL? Well, a quite a few things. One, the teams that are supposed to be good really aren't that good. The teams that are supposed to be bad really aren't that bad. This is probably going to be the most balanced season we've ever had in the NFL. Number two, even if you score a touchdown in the very last play of a game, you can still lose. And finally, if a female reporter enters your locker room after a game, shows up to your practice, no matter how tight the pants she's wearing, no matter how open her blouse is, no matter how fat the ass is, don't say nothing. She can tease you all she wants, and all you can do is sit there and deal with it. Yeah, we're living in equal times, aren't we? <laughs> Man, I love football, and I really enjoyed the first week of the NFL season. But overall, man, the games are pretty lackluster. The only game I actually watched that I enjoyed was the Colts versus the Houston Texans. And that's because I hate Peyton Manning. Anytime that mother can lose, I'm down. And so I really enjoyed that game. Then you have uh, the Green Bay Packers versus the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I hate both teams because, you know, I support the Cowboys in a way. And I definitely hate Aaron Rodgers. But, man, when the Vic, when the dog killer showed up, boy, it was like old times. I mean, Philly, come on now. When the last time y'all had a good white quarterback? John Wanowski, that old dude? Philly is about black quarterbacks. You need a black quarterback to do something, to be about something. So go ahead and give the ball to the Vic. Now, I want to send this out to my boy, Calvin Johnson. You know what? You probably would have been awarded a touchdown if your nickname wasn't Megatron. I mean, come on now. When do bad guys, when did the villain ever win? If you was called Optimus Prime or something or Ironhide, they would have given it to you. But you Megatron. And Megatron always loses in the end. And I'll tell you one more thing. I hope the NFL will finally put this 18-game schedule to the rest. After week one, there's no team that could keep a full roster the entire 18 games. You see how many injuries there were last week? I mean, damn, fools are just getting their shit broke left and right all day long. All right, it's fantasy football time. Coming off of week one, I split. In one league, I won. In the second league, I lost. Right now, in free agency, if you're trying to pick somebody up, you see someone's kind of hot, see someone, see someone on a, uh, in the free agency pool scoring a lot of points, here are some people I suggest. Michael Vick might be a good pickup this week. I doubt uh, Cobb plays and Philadelphia Eagles are playing Detroit Lions. Get Vick. He should go off. Matt Hasselbacks, He's available in most leagues, I believe. He's playing Denver at Denver. But still, after last week, that'd be a good pickup. If you're really in need of quarterbacks, those are two you can pick from. On the receiver side of free agency, Mark Clayton, St. Louis, Nate Washington, Tennessee, and Brandon Lloyd, Denver, might be available. They were the top scoring receivers in most leagues that weren't drafted. So check them out. And finally, if they're available in your league for running back, Javon Ringer, Tennessee, I'm not sure about that one because mainly he got some sloppy points left over from Chris Johnson, and then they play Pittsburgh this week. So if you really need a running back, you might can try to pick him. All bets, try to get um, the backup for the uh, Green Bay Packers, Brandon Jackson. With Ryan Grant gone pretty much for the year, he's definitely going to be the hottest pickup in fantasy football. So we have 
in my DPC Fantasy Football League. My team, MFS, motherfucking squad. As of right now, I'm starting Brady versus the Jets. Um, Ricky Williams versus Minnesota. Reggie Bush versus San Fran. Ocho Cinco versus Baltimore. Reddy Moss versus the Jets. Austin Colley, who I had on the bench last week, he's going against the Giants. Dallas Clark versus the Giants. Mason Crosby, Buffalo. Uh, the Vikings defense versus Miami. And the, uh, the Sanchez as my overtime player. And in my other league, where I've changed my name to Paper Champions since I lost last week. I'm starting Drew Brees, of course, versus San Fran. Jerome, Jerome Harrison versus Kansas City, Fred Taylor versus the Jets, Reggie Wayne, Giants, Randy Moss, Jets, Donald Driver, Buffalo, Antonio Gates, Jacksonville, Jeffrey, Tennessee. Going with uh, the San Diego Chargers defense by Mike throw in Minnesota versus Miami. And then I have Steve Smith as my flex player versus Indianapolis and Chad Henney versus Minnesota, uh, Minnesota as my overtime player. So now, let me give you my predictions for the top four games of week two. After posting a 3-2 and two record on week one, here's hope I can get on a little winning streak. Game one, a 1 o'clock Eastern matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Ravens coming off a great hard fought game Monday night against the Jets, and the Bengals getting totally annihilated by the Patriots. On Sunday, last season, the Bengals won both games and won the division. After getting their butts smoked by the Patriots, I know the Bengals want to flex their muscle, show up at home. But after that Monday night game, there's no way I can go against Ray Lewis and the Ravens. So I'm picking the Ravens to win this game. Game two, another 1 o'clock Eastern game featuring two teams that won their first games during week one. The Pittsburgh Steelers going to Tennessee. Man, Pittsburgh got lucky. They got lucky they were playing the Falcons. They should have lost that game. I mean, Dixon didn't do dick. But that Pittsburgh defense, like I suggested, held them, kept them in the game. And now they're playing a Tennessee team that has Vince Young playing great and Chris Johnson, you know, running wild. They're also at home. So you should think that, you know, Tennessee win this game. But mm, I don't want to say that. Tennessee, I mean, they beat up on the Raiders, who are always bad. They're horrible. And so I'm not, my stock on them is not really that high. I say... Pittsburgh rolls into Tennessee with the upset and wins. Game number three, and which will be the best game of the week, the New England Patriots going to the New York Jets. The Jets, they got embarrassed Monday night. I mean, they didn't get dominated or just get totally whooped, but their manhood got, they, their manhood got you know, tested, and they didn't back it up. The Ravens went in there and kicked them in the balls and kicked them in the nuts and slapped their girlfriends, and they took it. So now you have Tom Brady and Randy Moss coming in. The Ravens showed it's possible to get around Revis Island. All you got to do is put him over there on the side and let him do nothing and throw at other guys. And, you know, T.J. Hushman's daughter and Bowden are good. But Randy Moss and Wes Walker are better. So, I'm going with the Patriots making the Jets 0-2. And, and my final pick for Week 2, the Manning Bowl on Sunday Night Football, NBC. Eli goes to play his big brother in his big brother's home stadium. No way in hell, little brother beats big brother. Ever. And even if Little Brother can't beat Big Brother, Big Brother does everything possible to make sure Little Brother stays Little Brother. So, Peyton wins. Big. Well, thanks for watching my video. If you like this series, please subscribe. This is your boy, Joe Dion, and you've been watching The Sport of Kings. See you next week. Peace.